Way back in 1974, something wild happened along the Euphrates River. A massive dam started holding back water, causing a legendary shift. This river, the mighty Euphrates, has been a big deal for human history. It's seen it all, from epic stories to backing up ancient civilizations. But now? It pulled a vanishing act. Yep, the once almighty Euphrates vanished, revealing an insane stash of historical treasures. Think ancient stuff like mysterious symbols, forgotten secrets, and relics that scream, blast from the past. What's the deal with this discovery? Scientists are flipping out about what they found under the riverbed. It's causing quite the stir in the science gang. Wanna join in on the uncovering of these secrets? Let's dig into the mysteries wrapped around this iconic river. For ages, the Euphrates River was like the VIP entrance to the ancient Assyrian city of Nineveh. At one point, this city was a big shot, the largest one around. Before we begin I would appreciate if you would like the video so that you can help me to continue spreading Christian messages. If you are not subscribed I recommend you to subscribe and activate the bell so you don't miss any video that are uploaded every day. Alright, let's keep rolling. The Euphrates River has been the OG water highway for thousands of years. It's been the lifeline for folks across countries like Turkey, Syria, Iraq, and even Saudi Arabia. Picture this, the river's water starts its journey from eastern Turkey's highlands. When the snow melts up there in late spring and early summer, it's go time. Down the river it flows, making its way through these countries. This river is a big deal for Iraqis. They've been chillin' near it for ages, relying on the annual floods that jazz up their lives. Nature's gift, right? It's a lifeline, supporting their crops and keeping their civilization on track. Over time, the Euphrates became the backbone of this region's ecosystem. It's seen civilizations rise and fall. You can still find bits and pieces of ancient times scattered around, like puzzle pieces telling stories of lost cultures. Iraq's connection with the river. Iraq knew what's up when it came to using the river's power. They pulled off some slick moves, transforming dry lands into lush fields that propped up mighty empires. Even though these empires fizzled out, their jaw-dropping leftovers still have us hooked. But, after World War II, things got a bit rocky between Iraq and the river. More people, more water needs, drinking, farming, industries, the works. In the 60s, Iraq was guzzling down almost half of the river's yearly flow. That's a lot. But, surprise, surprise, excessive withdrawal messed up the river's natural flow and the whole ecosystem took a hit. Solving the puzzle. Scientists, engineers, and the smart minds in policymaking went into overdrive. They brainstormed, trying to fix this mess. From better water management to cooler irrigation tricks, they tried it all. Meanwhile, Syria and Turkey threw their hats into the ring with their dam projects. But as these projects grew, it was crystal clear. Water demand was gonna blow past what the river could handle by the end of the century. Rivers roll today. Iraq, hanging out in the lowest part of the basin, got hit the hardest. Arguments over who gets how much water strained relations between Syria and Iraq. And with Turkey and Syria using more river flow for their farming, things might get even tenser. 
the Euphrates River, the source of life and treasure, isn't just a history book thing. It's still a big deal today. It's the water supply for farming, trade, industries, the works. And guess what? Its journey doesn't stop at Iraq's borders. It joins forces with the Tigris River, becoming the Shat al-Arab, a tag team that flows into the Persian Gulf, ending its epic voyage. Throughout time, the Euphrates has seen it all, human triumphs, struggles, conflicts, you name it. Empires like the Assyrians, Persians, Greeks, and Romans went head to head to control this powerhouse river. They knew its worth, using it as a power move in the region's game. The Euphrates is like a silent witness to history, a part of the people's memories in Basra. The marshes, a magical world. Imagine this, a stunning landscape with tiny channels creating this magical thing called the marshes. It wasn't just some wetland, it was bursting with life. And it was home to a special group of folks called the Marsh Arabs. They had a sweet deal living in sync with these marshes. But, hold up, things got messy in the 90s. Saddam Hussein's crew decided to drain these marshes to tame those rebellious Marsh Arabs. It was a heavy blow. The life-giving waters disappeared, turning the land into a dry wasteland. It felt like the marshes vanished into thin air. But hey, destiny had other plans. In 2003, when Iraq got a new squad in charge, they realized the marsh's true worth. Not just for nature, but for culture too. So, they flipped the script, decided to bring back the marsh's glory days. Easier said than done, though. Picture this. A major challenge hit the river feeding the marshes hard. The water level dropped big time, making it tough for any boat that's not ultra shallow to cruise the Euphrates. These special boats? They're rock stars, sliding through water as shallow as a tiny puddle. They're the heroes exploring the river's twists and turns. But their journey? It hits a dead end at hit in Iraq. At a measly 53 meters above sea level, hit acts like a bouncer, saying, no boats allowed past this point. And guess what? Getting to the marshes is a serious grind. It's a whopping 1,930 kilometers, or 1,200 miles, from hit. But hey, reviving these amazing marshes? Totally worth the hustle. It's not just about the environment, it's about the folks living off these marshes, the marsh Arab communities. These boats built to handle the river's shallow waters are pure genius. Their bottoms are specially designed, barely touching the water, making them glide like poetry, even when the water level is crazy low. As they gracefully navigate through the river's shallow spots, Hit marks the final stop. Beyond Hit, the river gets deeper, tougher, making it a no-go zone for these shallow boats. It's like a natural boundary telling them, this is the end of the line. But hey, some folks brave it all. They take on a crazy journey, battling nature's forces, going against the river's flow. Why? To reach the marshes. It's not just a regular place, it's a haven for plants and animals, a biodiversity hotspot. Restoring these marshes isn't just an environmental thing, it's about keeping the traditional marsh Arab way of life alive. Now, let's dive into something intriguing, prophecies about the Euphrates River. Did you know this river's got some wild predictions tied to it? 
In the ancient book of Genesis, it's one of four rivers kicking it in the legendary Garden of Eden. And hold on to your hats, in the book of Jeremiah, things get even juicier. Jeremiah, this old school prophet, dropped a prophecy about the Euphrates getting all dried up because people were too into their idols. And guess what? Recent times saw a drop in water levels in both the Euphrates and Tigris rivers. Coincidence? Maybe, maybe not. But that's not all, folks. The Euphrates River gets a shout-out in the Book of Revelation. Brace yourself, it's predicted that during the end times, this river's gonna dry up. That's a big deal, a signal that something huge's about to go down. And get this, there's talk about a massive army from the east crossing the river, marking a major showdown between good and evil at a place called Armageddon. Now, in Islamic beliefs, the Euphrates is a big deal too. Their scriptures talk about this river as a paradise connector. And hold on to your socks, there's talk about a mega battle, the Battle of Dabak or Armageddon, happening there, signaling the end times according to Prophet Muhammad. But wait, there's more. Islamic teachings spin a tale about a hidden mountain made of pure gold hiding in the Euphrates. One day, this mountain's gonna show up, signaling the end times. But hold your horses. Prophet Muhammad warned about people going crazy greedy when this gold mountain pops up. Only a rare few will resist the temptation. These prophecies? They're no joke. They're backed up by respected collections of sayings from Prophet Muhammad. It's like a serious heads up about what's possibly coming our way. Talk about a wake-up call. When the Euphrates dried up, it wasn't all doom and gloom. Nope. It was like Mother Nature decided to unveil some serious secrets. Ratib Ali al head honcho at Onbar Province's Antiquities Department, hit the jackpot. This drought pulled back the curtain on ancient sites we didn't even know existed in Onbar, Iraq. It's like stepping into a whole new chapter of history. Before the area went underwater, about 75 archaeological spots got some love with partial digs. They were like sneak peeks into different cultures, dating way back to 300 BC. We're talking Sumerians, famous for their mark on history, and Romans, known for their grandeur. But wait, there's more. Ancient Jewish communities had their stories tucked away too. Fast forward to now, with the water pulling back, Ratib got to check out these spots that were hidden underwater. Imagine a cliff decked out with pre-Christian tombs etched into it, like a time machine. It's like a storybook coming alive right before your eyes. Now, let's talk legends. Gilgamesh, the king of Sumer, was a rock star. His tales of bravery and adventure were the talk of the town. This guy didn't hold back, questing for immortality, challenging the gods themselves. He ruled during a time when civilization was thriving in Mesopotamia. You've heard of the Cradle of Civilization? Yep, that's where Gilgamesh made things happen. Under his rule, the land boomed, and unity was the name of the game. But Gilgamesh wasn't just a ruler, he embodied ambition and the hunt for wisdom. Today, his story lives on as one of the oldest pieces of literature, diving into deep themes like friendship and the quest for meaning. Okay, fast forward again to 2022, when the Euphrates pulled off another surprise. 
As the dam lake in Syria drained, it unveiled a mind-blowing secret. It was like a magic trick revealing a whole ancient civilization buried under there for centuries. Archaeologists went wild. They found ceremonial goodies, jewelry, pottery, artifacts that spoke volumes about ancient lives. But hold on to your hats, burial sites were the real deal. They gave voices to the dead, telling tales of rituals and beliefs. Can you imagine learning about ancient diets and health from old skeletons? It's like history coming back to life. Now, let's talk about this jaw-dropping discovery, a massive head sculpture. It's old, weathered, but oh so intricate. As it revealed itself, people were losing their minds. News spread like wildfire, drawing in curious souls from everywhere. This face frozen in time, engraved with the marks of a forgotten civilization, mind-blowing, right? When that colossal head sculpture emerged, folks had some wild theories. Some said it held blessings like it was some ancient genie, ready to grant wishes. Others thought it was the key to unlocking forgotten wisdom. Scholars and archaeologists? They were like kids in a candy store, armed with tools and notebooks, ready to decode this massive find. Now, let's rewind to the hidden Matani Empire. This city was like a secret superhero, buried underwater for centuries. Back in the 80s, people knew there was an ancient city in the area, but they didn't dive in until 2018 when parts peaked out during a drought. They found a massive palace and walls painted in vibrant shades, giving a sneak peek into the city's glory days. But time was running out. The waters were rising again, swallowing the city. Fast forward to now, another drought hit, and boom. A team was on it like lightning. They uncovered colossal buildings, artifacts, and an industrial complex. One multi-story storage building? It was like a time capsule, holding goods from all over the region. Talk about a history lesson. Then there's Haystack Castle in Turkey. In 2021, as the waters pulled back, this ancient temple popped up, telling tales of a pre-Christian era. Carved into rocky hills, it's covered in captivating Greek inscriptions, inviting us to unravel its religious mysteries. Each chisel stroke and etched word is like a whisper from the past, giving us a peek into ancient beliefs. Jumping over to Syria's Lake Assad, when the waters receded, they unveiled the ancient settlement mound of Murabet. This place, dating back to the Neolithic era, is a time machine to humanity's early days of farming and settling down. But here's the kicker, it challenges our ideas about ancient gender roles. Evidence suggests women were revered as deities, flipping the script on what we thought we knew about those times. And let's not forget Nineveh. This ancient capital of the Assyrian Empire was the real deal, grand palaces, towering temples, and libraries filled with ancient wisdom. A bit further down the Tigris, Tel Brak, another bustling metropolis, hides traces of an even earlier time, giving us a glimpse into Mesopotamia's dynastic era. The discoveries along the Tigris River are like pages torn from a thrilling history book. Imagine early writing etched onto clay tablets, showing us the roots of human communication. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. The agricultural system they had going on? That was next level. 
They knew how to tame the land and grow their own grub, sustaining themselves way back when. Now, get this, the Tigris River also spills the beans on civilizations like the Sumerians, Akkadians, and Babylonians. Think towering ziggurats, supposedly hangouts for the gods, standing tall against the skyline. Palaces and tombs, meanwhile, give us a sneak peek into daily life way back when. But here's the rub, these exposed sites are feeling the heat. Without that protective water blanket, they're facing decay, erosion, and the wrath of the desert's harsh climate. Archaeologists aren't sitting on their laurels, though. Nope, they're on it, working hard to dig up these treasures and shield them from the elements. See, it's not just about preserving the past, it's about understanding where we've come from. These artifacts? They're time capsules, holding the keys to our cultural heritage. We've got to step up and safeguard these remnants of ancient civilizations. Their story shouldn't fade away with time or neglect. Only by protecting them can we keep uncovering the mind-boggling mysteries of our shared human past. So, which of these discoveries gets your heart racing the most? If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share with your friends so we can keep making them. For more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and remember to click on the notification bell. Also, be sure to check out our other videos as well. Thanks for watching.